There are those who think that uh, Surat al-Baqarah, Ayah 79, says that the Jews have rewritten their scriptures. But if you read this text, what is it saying to us? It says, woe unto those who write something with their hands and then say, this is from Allah, that they may purchase a small gain with it. Woe to them for that which their hands have written and woe unto them for that which they have earned thereby. The idea here is not that of rewriting. This text does not speak, number one, of rewriting. It simply talks, talks about writing something and then presenting it to put it on an equal footing which that, with that which was revealed previously. The second thing we will retain here is that this is not talking about tahrif. It's not talking about taking that which was already there that existed and then changing it. No. It is talking about people who want to bring something and in addition to it, present it as the word of Allah and do so for financial gain. This is what it's talking about. This verse cannot contradict Surah to Yunus and Ayah 64, which we have already covered, which tells us that the supreme triumph of Allah is that he preserves his word. But whom is it that the Quran accuses of selling these fake writings? Well, from the immediate context, we find them called a party within the Jewish community. Secondly, the text tells us that it was illiterate men living among the Jews, ignorant of the scriptures, it says, who wrote these books as scripture and sold them. Now, think of this. This appears to be contradictory, for illiterate people obviously cannot write books, but it calls them illiterate men. How do we understand this? Well, the Arabic word translated illiterate is ummiyun which according to Ibn Abbas and other authorities also means Gentile or pagan in the sense of polytheistic Arabs who were neither Jewish nor Christians. Since these fake scripture writers were clearly literate, we are forced to interpret this faction, this group, as being Gentile forgerers living near the Jews, but not the Jews themselves. Indeed, History tells us that there were many such Gentile Arab poets who composed false quote-unquote revelations for personal profit. Nadr ibn Harith, Musaylima, Al-Ansi of Yemen, Mani, Mazdaq, Al-Mukanna, and Bahullah. All these men fit the profile of what the Quran is denouncing, namely Middle Eastern Ummiyun. Gentile deceivers who, after being among Jews and Christians, wrote their own fake scriptures and declared, this is from Allah for personal profit. Naturally, the Jews and Christians rejected every one of these scriptures since they had the real ones with them.